<laughs> Thank you for joining us here at the Dome. Thanks, Darren. Yeah. Happy to be here. So uh, why don't you do myself and, and the crowd watching a little favor and tell us what we're doing here or what goes on here at the Dome. Well, here in this test lab, and we have a couple others that we operate as well, but this is the dome and this is the kind of the master test lab, if you will. We do maybe primarily testing to various worldwide standards, but we also do a lot of testing that is outside of traditional standards. As we've evolved over the decades, we've learned that while standards are super important, um, there are aspects that we want to learn and know more about how headgear performs. So there's some limits, if you will, with traditional standards. So this equipment that you see is, most of it is oriented towards um, a particular standard or standards for headgear. Some of it is um, gear that we've designed. I think uh, you met earlier uh, Nico Henderson, who runs the lab, our director of the lab here, and, and uh, he is especially well suited to engineer a, um, from a problem, a solution from a testing standpoint. Mm -hmm. So he's the guy who works with a team to figure out uh, test equipment that's sort of outside of the standards. So Tom, can you tell us like what your background is and expertise in the head protection world? Keep in mind that I'm old. Um, I'll try not to get too detailed. Um, in 98, I was lucky enough to be able to come over to Bell, which was kind of a secret wish of mine. Did a variety of things for the first couple years, but then I got into this weird area called corporate affairs, where I oversee uh, testing standards and safety. Important. Yeah, weird, but very important. There, yeah, it's, it's not the, uh, the part of a company that uh, if 100 people apply for jobs here. So they're not they, striving for that position? No, no, they, most people are sort of yeah, unaware. That, that the long uh, background, though, to be able to like, get to that level, though, that's like, I mean, pretty prestige level, though. I mean, you're making a huge impact across, you know, I mean, company-wide. And mostly because I get to work with the people that um, truly do the work that makes a difference. You know, I'm lucky enough to... Uh, have folks reporting into me who are good scientists, who have the, um, the sort of the hard physics background. Mm -hmm. To be able to work with people like that, people who uh, get masters in safety science, you know, that's pretty nerdy, but it's pretty core to our product. Yeah. Um, you know, again, all helmets do have limits, and I, I don't want to suggest that our helmets are, um, in any given accident better than some other helmet. But I do know that I have more confidence wearing our product generally. I can't say that it's safer. Um, there's a lot of good products out there. But this background has given, given me, um, from that passion, of a feel for what it is that we do, what our people do, how we go above and, and beyond the various standards. Yeah. So it's, um, it's real, it's not like a made up marketing thing. I'm not involved in marketing obviously at all, but um, it is, uh, it's a very satisfying kind of role for me to take. I mean, for me, personally using this stuff as an athlete, I relied on the protection that I would need to put all on the line. And uh, I, would, I kind of pride myself in you know, take risk, but knowing that I had you know, the confidence in the equipment I was using, yeah, so, and you guys are doing that here. And, and that's a good point. Um, when you compete, you are often competing at a higher speed than other people might. And so it becomes especially important. Of course, all helmets have limits. And even in a slow speed, you can get seriously injured or even die. But we um, do our best to engineer helmets that work well over that whole spectrum of use. From the cul-de-sac rider who never goes more than 10 miles an hour to the racer. Um, I depend on a, a, one of our motorcycle helmets when I split lanes every day here in California. Yeah. And uh, while that is far from competitive, uh, there are risks whenever you're choosing to ride a bicycle, motorcycle, um, or ski or snowboards. Because we have such an active group of engineers and designers and um, test 
folks that actually participate in the sports, we kind of sort of feel the need for that protection because we crash too. It happens. <laughs>